Welcome to the quick start video for Arista Network 7000 series 2RU data center switches. This video provides information concerning safety precaution, handling, removal, installation, and verification of field replaceable units specific to the Arista 7000 and 7250 series switches. In this video, we will cover the following topics. The 7000 series 2RU data center switch overview, rack mounting, powering the switch, power supply, managing airflow, LED indicators, and verifying operation. The content in this video is an addendum to the quick start guide and does not cover all safety precautions found in the full guide. For complete safety precautions and specifications, please refer to the quick start guide and the data sheet located at arista.com. Standard hand tools such as screwdrivers may be needed. Certified lifting devices may be required for chassis and fabric modules located above 5 feet. A serial port RS-232 and a computer may be required to verify operation using the command line interface. The verification procedures of successful FRA replacement via LED status and CLI commands are provided within each FRA replacement section immediately after the FRU item is installed. And a list of CLI commands pertinent to the verification are also summarized for convenience at the end of this presentation. The verification of successful FRA replacement may require the execution of show commands via the EOS command line interface. For instructions pertaining to the EOS command line interface, consult the Initial Access Quick Start Guide. At any time during your installation, you may contact Arista Networks TAC by phone, web, or email. The Arista 7050X and 7250X series are 2RU fixed configuration switches with support hot swappable AC and DC power supplies and also feature N plus one hot swappable fan redundancy with colored coded fans for front to rear and rear to front airflow. Prior to the installation, equipment should be inspected to ensure all components are present and not damaged. The 7000 series switches normally ships as a bundle with two power supplies and four fan modules pre-installed in the chassis. The 7000 series switches also ships with a 4 post rack mount kit, 2 power cables, 1 RJ45 Ethernet patch cable and 1 RJ45 to DB9 adapter cable. Before racking the switch, be sure you have enough space in and around the rack. As the name suggests, these switches require 2 rack units of space to fit in. Next, determine which side of the rack will be front and which will be rear. Keeping in mind the airflow configuration of the switch, hyphen F or hyphen R. The handle color indicates airflow direction. A blue handle indicates air inlet module and a red handle indicates air exit module. This video covers the four post rack mounting procedure. This procedure separates a bracket rail assembly into its component pieces. Step 1. Grip the rail with your right hand. Pull the bracket flange away from the rail flange with your left hand until the bracket clip catches on the rail. If the bracket flange resists initially, verify the thumb screw on the bracket flange is not attached to the rail flange. Step 2. While pressing on the locking clip on the bracket, resume pulling the bracket from the rail until the separation is complete. Step 3. Repeat the procedure for the other assembly. Attach both right and left mounting brackets to the switch. Step 1. Align the mounting brackets with the attachment pins to obtain the desired mounting position. Step 2. Place the bracket flush on the chassis with attachment pins protruding through key openings. Step 3. Slide the bracket towards the front flange until the bracket clip locks with an audible click. The rail is a two-piece mechanism. The rail length is adjusted by gliding the rail rod inside the rail slide. The rail clip prevents the extension of the rail beyond the maximum support distance between front and rear rack post. When the rail is contracted, the rail clip is closest to the slide end. The rail is initially contracted and must be expanded to attach on the rack. This procedure expands the rails from the contracted state. 
Step 1. Grip the slide end with the left hand and rod end with the right hand. Step 2. Pull the ends apart until the rail clip makes an audible click. Next, assemble the rails onto the equipment rack. This procedure attaches the rails to a four post rack. Step 1. Attach rail to the right rear rack post by inserting rod end rack plugs into post slots. The slide assembly must be inside the right post relative to the left rack post. If the rack plugs were previously removed, use bolts to attach the rail to the rack. Step 2. Attach the slide end of the rail to the front post by extending the rail end past the post, then contracting the rail while guiding through the rack plugs into the post. Step 3. Repeat steps 1 and 2 for the left post. Ensure the rails are on the same horizontal level. Next, insert the switch into the rack and secure it with bolts. Step 1. Lift the switch into the rack and insert the mounting brackets into the slide rails. Step 2. Slide the switch on the rails towards the rear post until the mounting bracket flanges are flush with the rail flanges attached on the rack post. Step 3. Attach the bracket flanges to the rack post using the quick release thumb screw supplied with the brackets. The 7000 series switches features N plus 1 hot swappable AC power supplies, each with integrated fans. Power modules are installed in the back of the switch. Power cables are connected to the power modules in the back of the switch. The system is N plus 1 power redundant, which means only one PSU is mandatory for an uninterrupted switch operation. The switch will continue to be powered on if one of the two PSU were to fail. It is recommended to install both power supplies and connect the power supplies to two different power sources to provide grid redundancy. For more details on power specifications for the 7000 series 2RU, please refer to the full Quick Start Guide 7000 series 2RU data center switches and the product data sheet. Both can be found on arista.com. Plug the power cables that were supplied with the chassis into the AC power sockets. Check the LEDs located on the power supplies to confirm that the power supplies are operating and receiving power. Use this chart as a reference to determine status. To remove a power supply, simply unplug the power cord. Next, press the ejector handles on the side of the PSU. And last, pull the power supply module until it's completely removed from the chassis. To install a power supply module, slide the module into the slot until it clicks. Plug the power cord into the power input for the corresponding power supply. Inspect the power supply LEDs found on the power supply module to ensure proper operation. Refer to the section Power Supply Module LEDs for help. Use this chart as a reference to determine status. Use the CLI command Show Environment Power to verify proper installation of the power supplies. This command displays the status of all power supplies in the switch. The status of the power supply should say OK. The 7000 series 2RU features either front to back or back to front cooling. Fan modules are accessed from the rear panel. Fan modules are inserted to the switch from the back and each switch contains 4 fan modules. The 7000 series features N plus 1 fan redundancy. If one fan module fails on a fabric module, the remaining fans will supply sufficient cooling for that fabric and area of the chassis. Recall that there are also fans integrated within the power supplies. If a power supply or power supply integrator fan fails, the three fans in the remaining power supplies are sufficient to cool the system. Fan status LEDs can be found on the fan modules itself. Use this chart as a reference to determine status. If the switch is installed and operating properly, you may also check the fan module's status LED located on the front panel of the switch. Use this chart as a reference to determine status. Use the CLI command show environment cooling to verify all fans are operational. This command displays the fan status, airflow direction 
and ambient switch temperature. The status column should say OK for every installed fan. Use the CLI command show environment temperature to verify temperature sensors are normal. This command displays a table that lists the temperature measured by each sensor in the switch. The temperature levels should be below the alert and critical thresholds. Each port has its own indicator LED. Port LEDs are located in the vicinity of their corresponding ports and provide link and operation status. There is one LED for a SFP port and four LEDs for a QSFP port. Use this chart to determine status of port LEDs. Verify the switch operation with the help of the commands given in this table. Thank you for watching the quick start video for Arista Network 7000 series 2RU data center switches. Please visit arista.com or contact the Arista TAC for additional questions and assistance.